Okay, so uh, I've got three hands today. So this is going to be on quadrant geometry now. There's a lot of stuff you've seen at GCSE, but again, I've got to reintroduce it as part of the course. So I want to get cracking on with the gradient. Now, the gradient function, you might be thinking, okay, is that, do you have idea? And that is in differentiation. However, I'm not going to do that because it's coordinate geometry and with straight lines. So we'll look at that a bit later on in the course. But what I want to look at is the gradient m and y for the x plus c, as you will probably all know from the GCSE. So we've got y for the x plus c, there'll be m is the gradient, which we'll be looking at in a second, and then there'll be c is where it crosses on the axis, right? So it crosses y, c is like so. The axis is like so. Yeah. So to find the gradient, I'm going to pick two points. So I'm nice to go pick 1, 1, and 3, 3, just to make it a bit simple. I'll we'll make it harder in a moment. But to find the gradient is we do y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. The gradient. So that is the corresponding points, right? So to find y2, well, I know that's the second y component, which is 3. Take the 1, I'm going to do the x coordinates corresponding now, which is also 3 take 1, right? So 3 take 1 is 2. And 3 take 1 is also 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the gradient of this line is a gradient of 1. And the C, well, we now know the gradient, we can now find where this will cross the axes. Now, there's a new equation I'll introduce it to you later on. It's y minus y1 is mx minus x1. It's like so. This is brand new to A level, but you might have seen it if you've done the third class GCSE. So corresponding with what we've got on the y1 and everything that I've put in a moment ago, but the y minus 1 is equal to the m of the gradient, which is the 1 of x minus x1. And x1 here, the first, which is the 1. So I've got y minus 1, which is equal to 1 lots of x, so x, and then take 1 away. And we can add the 1, so I get add 1 to the minus 1 will give me 0. So the one would cancel, and I left with y equals x. Which is precisely what you would expect, because whatever x is, y is also. We've got x and the y, or x and y the same, so we end up with y equals x. So there's no c here, because whatever the c is, there's no c on the end, so I can put c as equal to 0. c means something. Alright, so we have y equals mx plus c, and doing it with a basic option. Now, what we need to know about is parallel and perpendicular lines. So I'm going to move on to those. So if a line is parallel, which implies we've got the same gradient. So I've got two lines. I know if they're parallel, if they've got the same gradient, which is nice when you get to vectors later on. However, if they're perpendicular, which means a meter 90 degrees, right? Well, if they meet at 90 degrees, like that, I've got my 90 degree angle there, approximately, you know, so not to scale the diagram, right? I've got my 90 degree, my 90 degree angle, and they, their gradients actually multiply to minus 1. So m1 times m2 is equal to minus 1. Now, if you know the gradient of 1, but you don't know the gradient of the other, so for example, I knew m1, I could say that m2 is minus 1 over. M1. And then multiplying around, if I knew what M1 was, or if I knew what M2 was, I could find M1. So I could say that M1 is equal to minus 1 or M2, like so. So that's how we can find a gradient from what we know about the perpendicular lines. Now, with circles and the equations of tangents, the tangent meets at 90 degrees at a edge of a circle and circumference, right? So, circle here, not to scale, alright, so forgive me for that. I'm going to give me some stick in the comment for it. So I've got my 90 degree angle meeting there to the radii, and I can easily find the gradient of that line. If I know the gradient of the radius, I can use my negative reciprocal rule so I can find the gradient of the tangent and then find the equation of the tangent. We'll get to that later. I'm not going to cover that right now. So we'll leave that out for now. So we know parallel lines are the same gradient. When our perpendicular lines, their gradients multiply to make minus one. So, what more do we have to cover? Well, I'm going to reintroduce you to the y minus y1 theorem again. But we know this works, we have to prove it to you that why it works, but I want to extend it a bit more. 
just to show where this is coming from and why it actually works. I'll just show you why it works, but I'll show you with a more complex example now. So, um, let's stick with fractions and decimals, shall we? We'll have a half and a quarter. And we'll have one and one. Now, I've got a point on a line, for example. It could be anywhere on that straight line. And I'm going to find the equation of that line. Well, first thing to find the equation of the line, I need to find the gradient, right? So the m, the gradient, is the y minus one. Y two take y one over x two take x one. Okay. So the y two will be the minus half. And I'm going to take away y one. Well, the y one here is the half. Dividing that by x two, which is the one to the quarter. Simplifying that up, because I don't really like fractions and fractions, so I've got three quarters on the bottom. Hold on a minute. Right, I've looked at this. Y2 is actually wrong. If you recalculate it, if you go to number six on the classwords, and you go to uh, and plug in your numbers into the table, and go to option and regression, it will tell you the gradient is minus, not, is minus 1.5. I don't get that here, because I've plugged it in incorrectly. So you should get minus 1.5 for the gradient, or minus 3 over 2. And the A, so the C, should be the 1. And the R is minus 1, which is the regression. Basically, it will be a straight line, if I would have calculated it correctly. So, massive apologies, but you should get minus 3 halves X plus 1, if you uh, did it correctly. So, keep watching, and uh, you'll see the rest of the course. So, I'll see you in a little while. And I've got minus a half, take, take a half, so minus a half plus a half, or a half plus a half, we'll get to zero. So it's a negative, yeah. So I've got zero divided by three quarters. Well, that is the same as multiplying by that fraction at the bottom. So I've got zero uh, times four thirds. We're going zero times four thirds. What do we got there? Zero. But four lots of zero, so we get left with zero. So there's actually no gradient between these lines. Now, this is why it doesn't work. This is sneaky, because there's no gradient. So, how are these lines connected? Well, funnily enough, they're not. So, there is no intersection. Now, intersection, whenever I say intersection, I want to be thinking of simultaneous equations. So, if I pull it me across to each other, we find the point where the graph right? Okay, so the equation of a straight line can be found if you know two points on a line, or you know the straight on the single point. So, this is reintroducing what I introduced you back onto the board. Okay, so when my hands were free, but in PowerPoint format, we know that m is equal to y take y1 and x take x1 in the diagram on the right. We can multiply by the denominator so we get m lots of x minus x1 is equal to y minus y1, which is typically written the other way around. So we get y minus y1 is equal to m lots of x minus x1. Okay, and that's the formula that we know. So you can find the distance between two points by using Pythagoras' theorem. This can also be helpful in finding areas. So if we have two coordinates x1, y1 and x2, y2, then we can create a formula for the distance between them using Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so I pick my two points, I can do y2 take y1 and x2 take x1. So the distance is equal to the square root of y2 take y1 squared plus x2 take x1 squared using Pythagoras. Okay, so we know Pythagoras' theorem tells us that a squared uh, plus b squared is c squared, and we can say that c squared is equal to, well actually that is c squared, so that's so. We can say that b squared, that must pick a specific length. 
but if we wanted to find c, I'd have to square root a squared plus b squared. Okay, which is similar to what we have there to find the distance. Okay. So for example, find the distance between the coordinates 2, 3 and 5, 7. All they have to do is sub in the values, and I get the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5 units. Don't forget your units as well. Okay. Now that formula is not given to you, so you do have to remember that one in the corner. Be careful though, if you get a negative to substitute, ensure to write minus 4 squared instead of negative of 4 squared. Okay? Because minus 4 times minus 4 is positive 16. Not negative of 4 squared, which gets you minus 16. Okay? So one's positive, one's negative. Just be careful of that. Your calculator will always do indices before subtractions, which is always where the brackets needed in your calculator. The Casio class with FX991EX is a specific one. Okay, so the straight line L1 with equation 4x minus y equals 0, and the straight line L2, 2x plus 3y minus 21 equals 0, intersect at point A. Find the coordinates of A, and work out the area of the triangle A or B, where O is the origin, and B is the point where L2 meets the x-axis. So you can solve them as simultaneous equations to find the coordinates of A. So I want to 4x equal to y, and I want to sub that one in. So I'll use in substitution here. So I'll end up with 4x minus 21 is 0. And I get x is equal to 21 over 14, which is 3 halves. Then I can sub in the 3 halves back in, and I get full lots of 3 halves, which is 12 over 2, which is 6. So the coordinates are 3, 2, 3 halves, and 6. Okay. So work out the area of the triangle A or B, where O is the origin, and B is the point where L2 meets the x-axis. This type of problem the sketch is quite helpful. The phrase, if it's tricky, draw a picky, right? So those are two lines. We know where they intersect and we can find out where they cross the axes. Yeah, it's quite helpful. And we, we know where they uh, meet because we know uh, from part A. So part A can lead you into part B, if you will. So, when the area we need is a triangle with a width of 21 halves and a height of 6. So it's 20 ha 21 halves times 6, all up to, which is, what, 63? Divided by 2, which is 31.5 yeah, square units. Alright. You could also write for that one, uh, units squared, and that would also be fine. So, two quantities are in direct proportion when they increase at the same rate. The graph of these quantities is a straight line through the origin. So the graph shows the extension of a spring where different masses m are attached to the end of a spring. So this is something you've done in physics, it's also called Hooke's Law, you might remember it as. So when I find the gradient of the line, write an equation linking e and m and explain what the value of the k represents in the context of the question. So gradient rounds of over 5 over 100 would get you to 1 over 20. Okay? And that's fine, don't convert it to a decimal, leave it to a fraction. We've got an equation linking E and M. Well, into y equals mx plus c, I can say that E is equal to 1 over 20m. You don't really need to use y minus y1, it's mx minus x1 for this one. You don't really need to use it because you can probably work it out in your head to be honest. And then part C, uh, the gradient indicates the increase in the vertical axis for an increase of 1 on the horizontal. Therefore, K indicates that the extension of the spring increases by 1 20th of a centimetre for every 1 gram increase in mass. So, for this question, I've got a container with filled with water, a hole was then made at the bottom of the container, uh, depth of the water was recorded at various time intervals and there's a, in the table on the right 
shows the results. Okay. So part A, determine whether a linear, mo a linear model is appropriate by drawing a graph. Okay. So nice and easy. Plot of that, like so. As the points form a straight or at least a very close straight line, a linear model will be appropriate. Okay. So to use an equation in the form d equals a t plus b. Okay, find an equation of the line, two pairs of values, find the gradient, as we've done there. The y intercept is also given to you in the table at 19.1. So the equation is d equals minus 0.13t plus 19.1. Nice and easy. Part C, interpret the meaning of the coefficients a and b. Well, this is the change of depth per second, so every second the depth decreases by 0.13 and the b is the depth when t equals zero, so it's the starting depth of the water in the tank. So use the model to estimate when the container will be empty. Well, that's when the container is equal to zero. So I want to solve that equation equal to zero. And I get t is 146.9. That's what I got. Hopefully you got the same. So in 1991, there were 18,500 people living in Bradley Stoke. Planners project that the number of people living in Bradley Stoke would increase by 350 each year. Part A. Write down a linear model for the population P of Bradley Stoke T years after 1991. Part B. Write down one reason why this may not be a realistic model. Okay. So what we know, we can easily write down the linear model. And part B. Uh, one reason why this is not realistic. Well, population doesn't grow on a linear rate, more people with faster growth, so this model may not be realistic. And that would get you all the marks for part B. For part A, you can do that pretty much in your head. 18,500 to start with, increased by 350 people every year. So we get P equals 18,500 plus 350T, or the other way around, so you could have it as P equals 350T plus 18,500. That would be fine. And that is everything you need to know for this section. Coordinate geometry allows you to branch into other parts of mathematics, which you've seen in the previous videos on logarithm, which I did previously. Okay, and you'll see the differentiation and integration, which we'll get to further on. So this is the end of this part of the video. Now, I'm going to be moving on to the next part in just a bit, and that is going to be all about the circles, which was introduced to you, in the video, which was which is now off the book. So, that is the end of this video, and uh, thank you very much, and uh, my boy is now out of here. Thank you very much. <laughs>